Hi there, this is Terry from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is this really cute card. I've used the Over the Moon stamp set to create this stack of cows. And I'm going to show you how I did this. So let's get started. The Over the Moon stamp set is really sweet. I'm using all three of the cow images, but there's also supporting images and lots of sentiments that you can use. I'm placing my stamp set under my plate. This helps keep the plate level and makes it easier to ink up the stamps. Now I've already positioned my first two stamps, but when I do the third one, I'll show you how I did this. I'm using normal weight Whisper White cardstock and I'm going to stamp using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. So I'm going to ink up my first stamp and then stamp it down. Then I can clean off that stamp and remove the Stamparatus plate. Then I can insert my second plate where I've already positioned my middle cow. Now to protect the first cow, because the second one's going to over stamp the first one, I need to mask off that first cow. And I'm using some masking sheets from Hunky Dory in the UK. Now these come on a cellophane backing and it's very thin thin material, almost like tissue paper, that has a sticky back to it. So I stamped onto that tissue and then I cut out the image. Now normally when you cut out an image, you cut outside the line or you leave a, a little border outside the line. But when you're creating a mask, you want to cut just inside the line. That way, where the two images join, you won't get a gap or you'll only get a very narrow gap so it won't be so obvious. So I've peeled the mask off the cellophane backing and I'm just carefully positioning it over that first cow image. Then I can ink up my stamp and stamp it down over the top of that first cow. and I'm giving it a good press down, especially where the images overlap. This also helps reduce that gap that you can get. Then I can carefully remove the mask and replace it onto the cellophane backing. Now, if you haven't got proper masking sheets, you can just use a post-it note or just normal copy paper and apply it to your image using a repositionable glue or low tack glue. Now I'm going to remove this plate because I want to position my final cow onto the first plate I used. I'm going to use the other side of it. Again, the first thing you want to do is to protect the image that you're going to be stamping over. So I've created another mask for this middle cow in exactly the same way as before, I've stamped onto masking sheet. I've cut it out inside the line. So I'm peeling that off the backing and I'm going to carefully position it over the cow. It was a little tricky to get this one into place without getting my head under the camera. But we eventually got there. I'm going to use a sheet of acetate or window sheet to help me position this last cow. And I've cut this to the same size of, as my Stamparatus base. Then I can take my image and I'm using the sticker on the back just to help me place it where I think it should go. Then I can pick up the image with the plate ink it up and stamp it down onto the acetate.
Okay, then I can really look at the image and check the placement of it. And I wasn't happy with this, uh, this one. The cow was too high up, so I knew I had to adjust it slightly. So I just clean off the acetate, clean off my stamp, and I'm just going to move the image down just slightly. And then I can go again, and I can do this as many times as I need to until I get the placement that's perfect for my card. So again, stamp the image onto the acetate, and I can check it, and I'm really happy this time. The feet look like they're going to be just right behind that middle cow's head. And I know the placement should be fine when I stamp onto my card. So I'll clean everything up first of all. Then I can remove the acetate. Ink up my stamp once more and stamp directly onto the card. And this is how I positioned all three of these images onto the Stamper Artist plates. I did a dummy run for each of them using the acetate sheet. I can then remove the mask from the middle cow. Again, I'll save the mask because they can be reused. And just check my image and it looks fine. Um, it looks like the middle cow is stood on the first cow's back and the top cow is stood on the middle cow's back which is what I wanted. I'm using the Stamping Blends alcohol markers for the colouring and I'm going to start with the basic black and the dark smoky slate. So the smoky slate pen first and I'm going to colour the horns and the hooves and the nostrils. I'm not going to do much blending for this image. Most of it is just going to be straightforward colouring. Actually, before I start with the basic black, I'm going in with the light petal pink and I'm colouring the ears and that area around their nostrils and mouths. I'm not sure what that's called. Now switching to the light basic black, I'm going to colour their hair, do cows have hair? The patches on their body and also the ends of their tails. And again this is just solid colouring, there won't be any blending. Then I'm just going to add a little of the dark basic black just to give some slight variation of colour.
For the leaves, I'm using the light and dark granny apple green, and these I will blend together with the light marker. Next, I'm going to use the light Daffodil Delight for the centre of the flower. And then while that dries, I'm switching to the pink. Now, I thought the pink was Melon Mambo. I don't know why. It's actually lovely lipstick. But this is why I use Melon Mambo card later on. It looks fine though. It's a close enough match. So I'm colouring in using the light, lovely lipstick, and I'm colouring the flower petals, the cowbell, and also the wellies. Then I'm just dotting a little of the dark Daffodil Delight in the centre of the flower, before switching to the dark, lovely lipstick, and adding some depth to those areas that I've coloured with the light. And these are blend with the light. Now to finish off my image, all the colouring has now been done, I'm going to go round the whole thing with the light pool party marker and this just adds that final finishing touch to the image. It really makes it pop off the card. If you haven't got the pool party, you can use the light balmy blue or the light smoky slate. I'm going to use Granny Apple Green ink and I'm just stamping the grass image several times underneath that uh, first cow. Then I'm going to take one of our blender pens and I'm just going to spread that ink from the stamped image below the grass as well, just so it gives a pale colour underneath. Then I'm going to emboss this complete panel using the subtle embossing folder. And this is the result that you get with this folder. It's absolutely gorgeous. It makes the a uh, cardstock look like a tapestry almost. Okay, I can now start putting this card together. My card base is in basic black. It's half a standard sheet of cardstock, scored and folded to create a portrait card. Then I have a Melon Mambo matte, should have probably been lovely lipstick, but never mind. So I can add glue to the back of my image panel and layer that onto the Melon Mambo. And then this whole section can go straight onto the front of the card base. I've already stamped and coloured a mat to go inside the card and I coloured it exactly the same as I did the front image. So again I can add glue and then position this inside the card. I finally noticed that I missed colouring the hair on one of the cows so I've gone ahead and done that and then this is my completed card. And my original card. I haven't got a favourite one this time. I think they both look super cute. What do you think? Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up 
and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.